Thank you. We'll call the meeting to order at 7.06 for the Ken Conservation Commission November 13th meeting. Um, first order of business is to do a roll call, elevate alternates to meet the quorum, which, so we have three of us and that meets the quorum, correct? Because we're five. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't That's have to do any, mm -hmm. uh, any elevating. Um, so we'll accept or amend the agenda. So I'll make a motion to accept the amended agenda so we can get oh, into- I mean, yeah, I want to amend the agenda. Yeah. Are you ready for that? Um, we should second the motion to um, accept second. the agenda. Well, I think okay. the motion will change once we amend it, right? Because then we'll be accepting. Yeah, it. so I'll I'll rescind that, and we'll just um, so, do any um, additions, which um, Melissa has one. I wanted to add seven B. Uh, terms of expiring terms and renewing expired terms. Okay, great. You got that, Bonnie. Yeah. Okay. Any other additions or amendments? No, I have no other additions. Okay, so I'll make a motion to accept the agenda with the addition of the 7B. Second. And Connie, just shout out if you need me to give you a second for anything. We're good. Okay. You can tell I'm note taking. Am I making <laughs> faces? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, you're good. Um, all those in favor of accepting the agenda? Aye. Thank you. And we have um, some minutes that went out from the October 9th meeting. Thanks, Connie. Um, does anybody have any amendments or edits on those minutes or what? I'll take a motion to accept them. So moved. Fantastic. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. Thank you. Treasurer's report. I did just see um, something from Liddy. Um, but she's not on. I don't see anything. It looked um, good. There was no nothing that glared at me as being yeah. you. Okay. Thank you, Liddy, for your report. <laughs> Is there any public comment? No public comment. We'll move right on to um, 6A, Materials Management in Kent, Save As You Throw. Rick, might this be why you're joining us tonight? He's still on mute. There he is. Yeah, I just saw the agenda and thought I'd listen. <laughs> <laughs> Any excitement about um, Save As You Throw or composting or anything? Things settle down with the orange bag? Oh, uh, yes and no. <laughs> Had some counterfeit ones come in, but somebody's <laughs> buying them somewhere else. So. Oh. so we put some new signage up. And the composting's uh, probably averaging just over a, uh, maybe 1,100 pounds a week, a little bit higher. Wow. So. Is that up or down or just sort of? Uh, for this time of year, it's about what it was last year. This fall, it was a little bit lower than the previous year, but don't know whether it was the type of material we were putting in there or maybe mm -hmm. there were more pumpkins last year than so far this year. But... Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything more on materials management? I would just right. say, Rick, if you're looking to, if you need our help in anything, please reach out. We're yeah. we're here and ready to help in any way that you 
think you need, whether it's tabling or messaging or anything like that. So. Okay. Still getting, uh, with the grants still through HRA, they're still kind of taking care of all the signage and stuff like that. And when I need help on something, they're willing to sure. come up and help out. Great. That's going to end next July, August. So well, we're here and we're on our own. I'm just curious about uh, wine bottles with lids. What what happens? They're supposed to separate them, right? The cork or the or the metal funk stuff around the top comes out. But do uh, people bother? They don't bother peeling the foil off them usually or the labels. But, Is that a problem? But everything, uh, depends on the number that go in there. Everything's supposed to be without lids, whether it's cork, a regular jar lid, or caps on a water bottle, a glass water bottle. They're all supposed to be off, but obviously people still can't read, so they just keep throwing. When it gets full enough, then I pick them out as we go, but the first half of it, I can't reach in there and get them. We need an extra sign there on the on the glass slots? Uh, signs don't seem to matter much. I mean, we've changed them, put different ones there, but they need to be oh, verbally definitely. told and then still, I mean, <laughs> everything's supposed to be clean also. And <clears throat> there's still half full jelly jars and peanut butter, <laughs> honey and everything that come in. So it keeps us, gives us something to do, picking everything out. Thanks, Rick. You're welcome. Yes, you joined us just at the right time. So yes, we're now right and late. I couldn't get into Zoom for some reason. Why why is it so difficult to get into Zoom this way? Zoom um, is I, always yeah. changing. All I can say is that <laughs> Zoom is always changing. Right. You gotta keep up with your skill set. Which is all thinking. Um so we're on to street trees, the the street tree program. So I think the the sort of timing and um that we didn't move forward with planting trees may have been in our favor with what's going on right now with the red flag and the stage two drought um issues in the state. Um and I think it's going to give us a little bit more time to come up with a program and build a program over the winter that we can, you know, pitch to the public come springtime. And we'll also be that much further, hopefully, with the sidewalk project. And that will be able to tell us, you know, where and where where we can and can't um, potentially add more trees to the village. Yeah, I agree. I I was uh, I think it was with Connie earlier in the week. I was like thinking how we would be in bu very busy watering trees, freaking out about trees, contacting people that we had planted trees for if we had gone ahead this year. So that was a good call, Melissa. Uh, uh, has anybody heard of anybody who wants a tree? Uh, have you reached out personally or not? Anybody? Well, we don't have a program yet, Yos. Like right. No, I know. A program. But I thought... No, well, Wendy had hurt. one person. Yeah. Certainly we can have our ears open uh, to people who might want to. But but uh, Wendy, you were going to email me the name of the person that you talked to. and If I could find it. I don't know who that was. She, okay. she came up to me at some meeting, you know, and I I don't know that I wrote it down. I guess I thought I'd hear from her specifically. But. Okay. But I do want to say, I think Joseph's, all of the materials I really read very carefully from Yosa, and I thought it was a terrific job he'd done. I mean, it's a platform that we can move from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and you saw that we've planted a lot of trees over the years. 
Although uh, not all by us, also by Kent Greenhouse uh, and so, but uh, we've planted a lot, but uh, we can do more. There's definitely a lot of holes still to fill. Yep. So I think we'll keep this on the agenda, you know, throughout the winter and and start to develop a program. Maybe next month we can have a, another conversation about maybe we can do a little homework and look at programs, street tree programs in other places in the state, other places in the country and see if we can not recreate the wheel. So one um, thing that, that I've been working on with Jean's help between <clears throat> last meeting and this meeting is setting up our uh, Google drive for the conservation commission. And I think I will be able to add all of this materials into the Google drive so that we'll all be able to reference it and that will definitely help in the organization and moving forward. And I think we should be able to pull something together really quickly once we set our minds to it. Yeah, absolutely. So, moving so on. what kind of things do we still want to work on? Like, uh, I think we need letter to, to the property owners, uh, a list of uh, three species that we want um, people to choose from. Um, what kind of things do you want to? I think we need to narrow. We need to to put some. on the paper the actual program, and then edit it so that it's it's a a so. package deal and ready to go out there to the public. I think so. I would say for next month, it let's all you know whoever is interested in this, let's go out and do a little bit of Googling and see if we can find other programs in the state or probably stay in New England. That probably makes the most sense. Yeah. And um, um, I have yeah, we had found some some programs in the state. We have uh, about five cities. Uh, so yeah. if someone yeah. if someone can email those to me in a format that I can then throw onto the Google Drive, we can all have that for our work project. But I'd rather, um, Melissa, just have me add it to the Google Drive once that's created. Yes, okay. I can. I can share that with you to do that. Yeah, I I have it all set. It just needs to be populated at this point. Got it. Great. And I think some of these things were added to a previous meeting already or mentioned in the minutes. And I think some some things were added as attachments. That's why we need it all to go. That's why it needs to all live in one Google Drive so that we can yeah. all see it because you're going over different things and at different times and sending it to us in email and piecemeal and everyone yeah. should have access to everything. Yeah. Right. I think you and, and I want to ask Rick something uh while he's here. Uh Rick, we, we were hoping um to like in the fall plant like five yeah. or so street yeah. trees at various properties. And we were hoping that you and the town crew would be willing to help us with that. Is that something you would be willing to do? I mean that'd be next fall, but yeah, next fall. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like but and still here. Here from now, I'm all there. <laughs> yeah. I mean that uh, I don't mind helping out with with you guys supplying the trees instead of the town. If you're right. putting private property, then so I don't think the town should be in well, we've done it before when we've had a big wipeout of trees like during a storm on Elizabeth Street. Yeah. We had the greenhouse put them all back on the um, individuals' properties, so that they were far enough away from the street and the sidewalk that they weren't interfering. And but I don't know if the town itself wants to, you know, start planting the trees. But well, the the um, right of ways are are pretty narrow. I mean, um, includes the sidewalks and. Any planting area is usually on private property, but it's right next to the sidewalk or next to the or near the road. But they right. have to be set back a bit, but it'll always almost always be a private property. Um, so we just need the um, people to agree to it and to care for it. But then we would dig it, uh, hopefully with your machine. Um, 
to get I think it we're done. putting I think we're putting the cart before the horse here because we need to define the program and then have Rick review the program mm -hmm. and make sure that he is comfortable with it. And if he's not, then we need to change it. Like, I, I don't think that we can even, as much as getting Rick's time here and putting him on the spot, I don't think that's appropriate, really. Yeah. Thank you, Rick. But I, I Welcome. <laughs> feel, feel for you right now. <laughs> It's a year away. I might retire by then. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently you're writing it into the program that you're not allowed to retire, Rick. <laughs> right. Out. We'll put that part in invisible ink for your review. <laughs> All right, moving along. We're going to go on to sustainable CT. I know, Melissa, you had something to um, review with the folks. So we'll sure. Start. So we received a communication from Marty on October 28th. Um, in regards to conversation that was had in our meeting, um, and so I just wanted to read it so that everyone's on the same page as far as sustainable CT goes. Um, Melissa Jean, I noticed in your 09 October 2024 meeting minutes that you referenced having Connie reach out to sustainable teams, specifically Joanne Wasty, to inquire about helping to continue the effort for Kent to apply for certification in the sustainable CT program. I want to remind you that this is not within the purview of the Conservation Commission to undertake any efforts on Kent's behalf for analysis and work plan for the certification. According to the Town of Kent resolution adopted 09 February 2021, the state sustainable CT municipal certification program for Kent was established as a subcommittee of the Board of Selectmen within the first selectmen's auth authorized to serve as a sustainable CT contact person. Resolution attached below. According to my records, a sustainable team subcommittee that was established on 17 August 2021 has not yet met, has not met since 17 February 2022, and three of the original members have been removed with one added as of that date. Since this program is within the purview of the Board of Selectmen, but has laid dormant for so long, I will reach out to those members who will still, who still appear on the sustainable team as active, including Joanne, and then discuss with the Board of Selectmen the next steps with this program. I welcome any thoughts, the ideas of the Conservation Commission as well. So I just want to say that publicly we are ready and waiting for the Board of Selectmen to, um, if they want our assistance, we are willing and ready to assist. Well, but listen, we I have an update. You do? I have, okay. I do have an update. So, um, so actually, uh, I I had already, by the time we received that communication, met with Joanne Wasty, who's very much still interested in continuing the effort, willing to help. Uh, you know, as you'll recall from our last regular meeting, we did identify the issue that there was a charged um, subcommittee, if you will, although it's called the sustainability team. Uh, of the Board of Selectmen. So we we had noted that there could be a logistical issue that we'd need to untangle and that we were open to just proceeding, you know, however we needed to in order to work all of that out. So following receipt of that email, I called Marty and just explained to him where we were with this. Uh, you know, Joanne is the only one listed uh, as a member of the sustainability team right now, although maybe you too, Jean, although, you know, here you are as uh, co-chair of the commission. So, you know, as far as reaching out and determining the interests of the remaining people that are still on the team, I think that is pretty much taken care of. Um, Marty and I uh, agreed uh, that it should be on the agenda for the next Board of Selectmen meeting. And, you know, he'll either add me to the team or he'll wrap the team into the Conservation Commission, if that is even possible, or he'll dissolve that or whatever it is in order to kind of unstick this and get it moving. Uh, another update, uh, you know, although, of course, nobody's doing anything official, uh, Joanne and I were able to meet with staff at sustainability, C, whatever, sustainable, sustainable CT. Sustainable CT. <laughs> uh, we had a meeting uh, with one of the staffers there who provided us with some information. Uh, we also, Joanne and I, have um, 
downloaded the materials, including the action work plan that is needed in order to move forward on sustainable CT. Uh, we both agreed to, on our own, uh, review that list. It's very long of action items and to annotate it and to make notes. Uh, I did that uh, for about three hours last week. So I've been through every single action item. I have some ideas on what the lowest hanging fruit are uh, in order to get us started and help us feel like we've made some progress. Uh, a number of you uh, on this commission have information that's gonna be instrumental in doing some of the action items. And so um, Joanne and I have a plan to meet in a week or so when she's had a chance to review the action items too and review that together. Um, so that's great. And then in the meantime, Lynn Worthington reached out and she's interested in being part of this group also. Super. So, good. That's great. Great. She can be really helpful. Yep. Thanks. Um, moving on to evaluation of dams. Um, Wendy, this um, I think this was your um, topic. How do we want to proceed with this? You're talking about the evaluation of the electric vehicle charging stations or what? Oh, now evaluation of play. dams. Yeah. Oh, dams, dams. Oh, Water goes no, on. I just don't know that uh, anybody's really paying attention to that. I, you know, as somebody who lives down, downstream from a fairly large lake with a very old dam. I, I I just don't know that anybody checks these things out or finds out whether uh, the owners are meeting the requirements for periodic tests. I don't know. I, I, I sent you all that article because it was kind of alarming, but uh, uh, I don't know who to ask. Uh, you know, well, do you have any visibility on this? Like what the statutes look like as from municipal standpoint of, you know, dams on private property, things like that. Well, they definitely, they definitely have requirements they're supposed to meet. Hang on, Wendy. I um wanted to see if Rick could give us any insight. I knew I should have left. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think DEP inspects dams around, but I would assume they're either depend on the size of the water body behind them or the height of the dam. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Well, I don't unless, know. They, unless they have a requirement to let the some commission here know. We don't know how thorough they are or what, what their criteria are. And, you know, it's just because with climate change, the size of these ponds is suddenly becoming a bigger issue, I think. And I, I just I just want to be sure somebody's looking at this, you know, in a formal way, making sure that we have a list of all the qualified um, ponds that are in, impounded by casual dams and that they're checked on a certain regular I mean basis I, I just get a feeling that it's not one of those things that's a very high priority unless you're living right next to it so Wendy have you talked to Ty about this uh I wasn't sure what what was appropriate for me to say I mean I, I already got myself in hot water with a neighbor because of something they did I'm, I'm a, I would uh, be surprised know. if there wasn't some regulation. And like Rick is saying, there might be something in deep. I think it's really more of a research question before we de decide that there isn't any regulation or oversight. But well, you know, so I, I, I feel as though now that I'm an alternate, I don't do as much as I did. And I, I you can't know, imagine, though, that Ty would be, be, you know, uh, that Ty would have an issue with just a very you know, with an inquiry in as opposed to, well, you know, a, a, might... a, an opinion that maybe things aren't regulated. I think we don't, we don't know. We have no right. idea. And might have a connection in deep that she can say, well, I don't know this answer. Go, go talk to so-and-so. And, and we just don't have the, the knowledge base. We put it on the agenda because 
you know, we're, we're definitely interested, but we don't know, we, we don't have an, the knowledge base. So, you know, I would say that going to Ty, going to seeing if she has a, a way to, um, a person that she can send you to that has more knowledge okay. talking to I, Lynn I, Werner. I, I'm willing to do that. I just, you know, I, I, I have to get used to this new role I'm playing. I don't know what I'm supposed to do and well, how much initiative I'm supposed to show. I don't think you're in any new role. We're just trying to, um, no one was ready to step into the role of being the chair and an alternate can't be the chair. That's the only right. new role that you're in. You did not want to be an all a chair. So no, we needed to put someone not. in that would be a chair. All right. Well, I'll call, I'll call Ty and ask her about it. Right. And, uh, yeah, you could, the, you're absolutely, you know, you're a member of the commission and, you know, even a member of the public, not a member of the commission could certainly call or email Ty's office and say, hey, I have this question. Absolutely. Can you help me understand it better? Or point me in the direction of somebody at Deep I could talk to or- I can send her that article and have her comment on it. I yeah. I would be more straightforward with her and ask her the actual question and, and see if there's anybody that can help us understand how dams on okay. private property are, whether they're regulated, I assume they're regulated, I assume there's some sort of inspection that needs to happen, but, you know, knowing nothing, I haven't even looked in the statutes. Um, I think it's worth just asking her a straightforward question. She's super okay. helpful. I will, and, I will do that. Yeah. And uh, check out with the EP because they're responsible for the dam safety and they, uh, it's part of, the, they may not have the personnel to keep a good yeah, eye on well, it, but it's on their. That's um, what I suspect, you know, it's honored more in the breach than in the doing. Yeah, but let's not like get into the speculative piece of it. Let's just. Okay. I'll, ties I'll got a, a Can you imagine that? Insurance also provides a method of risk management for dam mm -hmm. failures. So, you know, that, that homeowner's insurance for properties that have dams on them uh, may be another place to look to satisfy yourself or our commission that, you know, there is, you know, that, that there's not some terrible risk out there of uh, huge financial damage uh, without any recourse or protection at all. Mm -hmm. I will. Great. All right, moving on to um, 6E, updates if needed on um, green energy initiatives. Anything to update us on, Wendy? Uh, well, other than the effects the election is having on that, I, uh, I am going to a meeting right after Thanksgiving of the clean energy network of the state. And uh, a couple of things that I have brought up with them, they're going to be focusing on. Um, one is the EV, the, you know, the plans for uh, Route 7 and the, um, the uh, EV station. Um, so I'll have something to say before the next meeting, I guess, because there'll be discussion of some of these issues. Okay, great. Moving on to POCD, any updates on that? Uh, hold on, I'm coming. I, I saw on the, um, in the minutes or um, of the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission that uh, they listed the, uh, the list of uh, action items and they marked off the number of action items that they have completed. And so far, they've completed 70% of the action items that they were responsible for. I think that's a pretty neat way of, of keeping track of this. Um, looking at those action items of the POCD every so often and see how many of them have you taken on and completed. I mean, that, that's a great way of staying on top of this, I think. Uh, can I add a word on this? Uh, I've been trying to get from the Connecticut uh, Green Energy Network what various towns have in a way of 
um, regulations uh, about where solar can be put, what you know, what effects somebody else's trees have on somebody's solar. We don't seem to have much up to date view of all of the questions that come along with solar arrays and uh we need things in writing in our regulations i haven't found much about only a few towns seem to even have very clear regulations at this point but i'm hoping that that meeting i'll be able to find out more about that i i think the pocd needs some guidance there i mean it's a visual you know some people don't want to look at these things some people uh, don't think historic buildings ought to have any solar on their roof. There's a whole bunch of things that we've left to chance at the moment that we need to put into planning and zoning, I think. You know, the sustainable CT framework, uh, you know, unfortunately, we will not be updating our POCD until 2032. So that's quite a while from now. Uh, but, you know, it, had we given a look, you know, a better look to the sustainable CT framework uh, while we were reviewing the POCD the last time, it's a pretty good uh, table of contents or catch list for things that ought to be in a modern POCD for a town. So uh, hopefully, you know, by the time we do this the next time in 2032, which who knows whether I'll be sitting in this chair writing minutes at that point <laughs> uh, anymore. But, uh, you know, at, at that point, hopefully we will have certification uh, through sustainable CT and so be much better equipped to speak on some of these matters and uh, as a commission to provide advice to the people who are updating the POCD. But Connie, does that mean that we can't, that they are immutable just because it isn't in the POCD? Surely no. you can go to the I brought it up, Wendy, because we're talking about the POCD and because I, you know, that it seems to be, you know, as, as, as you correctly point out, our POCD, which we really just revised from 10 years earlier, uh, was perhaps inadequate in addressing some issues that had emerged in the 10 years since. And so, you know, for us to be able to look at more than what we had 10 years ago, I think would have been helpful in bringing some of these modern issues, uh, you know, to light and, and in, you know, into the POCD in a more meaningful way. Uh, that's not to say that towns can't take any action uh, in between, but it certainly is helpful to have action items in the POCD because then you understood, yeah, we're going to be benchmarking against them. I've just been surprised at how difficult it is to find out what other towns are doing about this. I mean, they're sort of, everybody's doing it on the fly, it seems. When I run into it with sustainable CT, I will let you know, Wendy, because I am fairly certain that there will be examples of town uh, processes, regulations, ordinances uh, in the area of, um, of solar. There's a it isn't just tremendous solar amount of resources yeah. from other towns who have done this uh, on that website. And that is available to you too, um, if you wanted to take a look. Well, if you see something, pass it on to me because I, I am really trying to, in my own little way, to find out more about this. It's very much on my mind. So Wendy, Rick put in the chat, um, all dams are permitted by deep or local wetlands are under all permitted by deep or local wetlands are under the dam safety regulatory program check CT deep. Thank you, Rick, for that statement. Thank you. I know that's what they should be doing. I'm just not sure they are. I think they're understaffed and it just falls off the table is my guess. Okay, so moving along, we're going to go to 7A, new business, the 2025 meeting schedule, which was Before attached. Before you move, actually, the minutes of last month suggest that our commission was to review the Connecticut Affordable Housing and Cons Conservation Collaborative report. 
Uh, Melissa, I don't remember. I just looked at the minutes prior to the meeting. I can't remember whether you did indeed share that report with the commission. And I did. And Wendy responded back that she thought it was fabulous. And we talked about it at the last meeting. I I had we didn't, we didn't make a we didn't make a um we didn't like adopt it or anything like that as far as the resolution goes because I'm not really sure that that should yeah, be the, first, the minutes just can... reflect that it was going to be an agenda item for this month so we can right. decide that it won't be an agenda item I just need to know because that's what we put on our minutes last month and we just adopted those. So do you all, did you, I mean, obviously Connie and I have reviewed it. Wendy reviewed it. Do you guys want to discuss it? I've reviewed it too. Yeah. So do you want to uh, talk we can about add it, it to the or agenda do you want right to move now before the next, we... next meeting? Or... No, we can add it. We can amend the agenda right on the fly and add it as 6G. Um, Is that all right, Jane? Yeah. It, it, it was actually under POCD, which is why I I just, I have everything. No, it was. <laughs> so and that's then covered. The minutes put it under POCD. They, okay. That's when we discussed it last time. And so that's where I was expecting to encounter it this time. Okay. So, okay. So does anyone have any questions or feedback on it after reviewing it? I don't think I need to go into presenting it fully because we did send it out mm -hmm. before the last meeting. Yos, did you have any questions or? No, it was, uh, it was a nice overview. Um, uh, just uh, do you see any, any locally, any opportunities for this? So I will um, say that on Saturday, the Kent Land Trust Board agreed to adopt the the resolution, which means that um, the board would consider or have the discussion before any acquisitions um, to make sure that it wasn't um, that the property wasn't a good collaborative property. Um, but as far as upcoming projects, um, you know. We publicly, Jim Milstein has talked to PNZ, and that pro project, I would assume, would come forward. Um, but I know nothing more than you know on that, Yos, as far as that goes. Yeah, that that sounds like a great project. I'm I'm very happy that that is happening. Yeah. Um, so I I hope that works out, and they come up with a nice plan. So I would just say, as far as the actual um, conservation and affordable housing um, discussion. We're at the part where all the various partners in Kent are bringing it back to their board and commission. And um, so I haven't heard whether PNZ has not discussed it, but I assume that'll be in their next meeting. I haven't heard if affordable housing, Kent affordable housing has discussed it. Um, but, you know, I can only just share that Kent Land Trust um, board adopted the resolution on Saturday. Is there any um also just because they work in our town as well, uh also report that um the Northwest Connecticut Land Conservancy's board has also adopted the or or in whatever formally uh passed a resolution to support the work of that collaboration and the ideas expressed in the report. So it's nice to know that we're working among uh, partners that really are committed to collaborative problem solving. That's awesome. Do you think there's any need for this commission to have a resolution, which we wouldn't, I don't think we would do tonight. We'd want to write something up. And... So there is already a resolution, Jean. It, it, it came over in that information that I sent. Oh, okay. The, the, all of our group, the, the towns all, collaborated to make the resolution. Um, okay. That's not to say that it couldn't be adjusted, changed, no, or I'm, modified, I'm <laughs> but, but the resolution, you know, it, it's, it's pretty, 
basically it is everything we discuss in our meetings and how we as a commission think um you know and and if we're if we want to adopt it i personally would have no problem yes putting our stamp to it but you know i would want you all to read it over yeah just to clarify that is a template resolution it's an example that was suggested mm -hmm. to organizations that were uh, you know, that we're reviewing the report. I don't know that the Conservation Commission necessarily has to. It's actually the hope of the collaboration that the Board of Selectmen would do okay. that. Okay. And maybe that's a role that we could play. Uh, if we do feel committed to the idea that affordable housing and conservation need not be at loggerheads, but can actually work, uh, you know, together in a town, um, you know, we could we could uh, come into a for selectmen or to a board of selectmen meeting and um, endorse their support of it. I I think more importantly, like planning and zoning will I would assume discuss it at their next meeting, and and just us being in support of it says to them that that they have our support. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important. I don't know. I, I think we could have a consensus uh, agreement that we think that the ideas that are laid out are are good ideas, solid and, and important, but I don't know that we need to adopt the resolution. I read that remark from our first selectman that uh, he wasn't happy with just this collaboration between these two things. He wanted to see economic development to be part of it. He wanted to say like a triad instead of just a conservation and affordable housing. Yeah, I think it's so, pretty clear that there are a lot of interrelated issues that, you know, that are, um, I mean, there, there's just no doubt about that, Yos, but they're, you know, seeing as how we don't have an economic development entity in yeah. the town of Kent, you know, seeing as how, you know, I mean, the, the, the purpose of this particular effort, which was a nine month effort, kind of a short, you know, thing was to bring together conservation groups and affordable housing groups, because I, uh, you know, members of those groups have in the past and the public often will try and use them against each other. But in a small community like Kent, where you know, it, it's completely conceivable that members of one organization might also be serving on other organizations and where we are all trying to forge a way forward together with all of the many issues that are complicated, you know, that the report and the work together is meant to be a showing that, yes, we can problem solve as a community and that we don't want to be used against each other, you know, just because we have roles and missions and visions that concentrate on specific components of our town. I would also say you have to start somewhere. And that doesn't mean that as an economic development commission or committee or whatever fills that void in our town gets developed, that that wouldn't be folded into this partnership just have to start somewhere and and this was a this was a really good way of diving in and getting a whole bunch of people on the same page yeah i agree is there anything to be said for sustainable uh ct getting us to say in writing that we support this it's not the be? thing about sustainable ct that is <laughs> really helpful wendy is that it's not all up to us so yes that will get the town points and no, the Conservation Commission doesn't have to do anything in order to get those points. Right. Okay. How about from the point of view of reporting it in the newspaper? Does that sway any people? Uh, there's a press release that is going out about this already. So uh, I, you know, having participated in led this project uh, in many ways, I would love for any of you personally to amplify its message. Uh, and um, for the Conservation Commission, as things come up in the future where there are collaborative or uh, efforts or ways for us to support each other's work for the Conservation Commission to, you know, stay mindful of what its role is, but also where there's no conflict to be supportive. 
Yeah, I, I since I wasn't at that meeting Saturday, I really don't know what this all is, but I, I I'm looking forward to reading. That's great. Can you find it? Because Melissa yep. sent it out and there's also a web page. So if you need it again, we can give okay. it to you. Okay. You did read it when I sent it out. You actually responded right to me saying, okay. wow, this is great. And you you actually no. spent some time. No, I just didn't know whether the land trust made any changes and all that. And, we didn't. You know. No. It was a good conversation, but there was no changes made. <laughs> Thanks for so, and, and more to come because I will be attending a social media component of this and how to frame it in social media on Friday. And so oh, good, good. Um, I like it. You I know, would also ask that the more. board meeting, the contents of board meetings for a nonprofit organization not be discussed in this forum. So no, no harm, no foul today. Uh, but just as a general rule, if you could keep it in mind, that would be great. Thanks. So thanks for reminding us about the um, that report under the POCD. Um, coming under new business 7A, the 2025 meeting schedule. Did everybody get a chance to look at that? Yeah, um, I, I have a question. Whatever happened to the early meetings in wintertime? I decided that I didn't um, want to switch back and forth on that, that it was a lot more effort than good in my personal schedule. So Having been the one that did the um, meeting minute meeting uh, schedule, I decided that I wasn't going to do that. And I personally um, had every intent to get on the meeting tonight at six thirty. And fortunately, Melissa and I had a little huddle at six o'clock, and <laughs> we got to get to I don't know six twenty. And I was like, "Oh, we got to get off so we can get on the Zoom meeting." She's like, "No, the meeting doesn't start until seven. So I, I think just having it one time. You know, the same time all year makes sense. We did add in an August meeting from the perspective of it's better to have it on the schedule and we can always cancel it if we're, if a lot of people are going to be on vacation or if we just think it's, you know, good to have a hiatus in a, in August, there's not a lot going on possibly. Um, so with that said, um, we should make a motion to approve the so meeting. I will just point out one thing that I did put an August meeting on there. We will potentially cancel it if we don't have business to conduct or if we don't have a quorum or whatnot, but it felt appropriate at this moment as Jean and I are getting our toes wet on being the chairs of this committee to schedule it out and we can always cancel. And if we don't have that August meeting, but need an August meeting, then, then it becomes a special meeting and we can't add anything to the agenda. It just becomes a little, a little more sticky. It's, this is cleaner and easier to cancel than it is to add. Uh, so, are these meetings gonna stay Zoom meetings? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So does that need to be mentioned on the, no, actually it is on the agenda. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it'll be in the warning in the yeah. agenda. So I'll I make a motion. Yes. I move to accept the calendar as stated. Second. I'll second that motion. You got that, Connie? Yep. Any other discussion? Hearing none. We'll move to vote. All those in favor? Thank you very much. And we're now on 7B, the new 7B. So, you off to Melissa. Absolutely. Um, as is customary, Joyce reached out to us and reminded us, thank you, Joyce, that um, Jean and myself have, um, our terms are up and they are a three-year term. And that Wendy's term of a one-year term as an alternate is also up. So at this moment, I will ask Jean, would you like to re-up for your three-year term? Yes. Okay. And Wendy, I'll ask you as an alternate, would you like to re-up for your one-year term? Uh, I would like to not re-up, uh, but I don't want <laughs> I don't want to. I, I don't know. It's complicated. 
I'd like to, to have more time to do my own projects than I have, but uh, I don't want to. I have a feeling if I quit, then Liddy will quit, and that's that's a bad deal. So the alternate term is a one year term. I would ask that you re up for the one year, and we have um, asked Marty and Joyce to post a call out in their newsletter for okay. anyone interested and so if people step forward we would you know work towards freeing you from your obligations if that works for you okay okay but wendy you love doing this don't you i do but i you know there's just other projects book a book i would like to go back to writing and things like that and i i think you know, I was the first person to be on this commission back when there were just three of us. And Tony DiPentima was one of them. And the third was another person who's no longer around. And so I go way back to the dinosaur age. And so new blood is a good thing. I personally... I'm going to ask you if you want to re-up for your three-year term. Sure. I will um, re-up for my three year, but that being said, I don't have any plans of being the chair for more than 10 more months. So I am looking to fill this board with people who are willing to be the chair and do projects. So yes, but with mm -hmm. the idea that if someone wants to take this position, I am happily will step away. <laughs> So I think we all need to enter into some recruit re recruitment mode and beat the bushes and find some inspired conservation focused folks. Um, and I will say that there is still one one year alternate term vacant right now, even with this agreement. So I will get back to Joyce and update her so that the board of selectmen can conduct their business. But that's... Um, where and I if, Melissa, if we found someone between now and our December meeting to be an alternate, that's still time enough to make that recommendation for the January annual meeting to the board of selectmen. This doesn't happen at the annual meeting. This happens at a regular meeting as far oh, as happens I at a regular meeting. Okay. Sorry. So, so it can happen at any time at a regular <laughs> meeting. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry. No, I do I think it's quite possible that Carol will not be able to come back for a very long time if she comes back at all and That's and if someone comes forward and we we will have that conversation when someone comes forward so all all good information we don't want to we don't want to you know we'll we'll talk to her when she's ready to be talked okay how about wendy takes carol's uh position and Carol becomes alternate. I don't I think when you were sitting in the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I don't I mean Wendy, you're welcome to do that, but I, I don't think that that solves your problem. No, and I don't think it's good for her morale to think we're pushing her out. I agree. Her. We I need to think, talk to her. Uh, keep that in mind that the more Let's volunteers go. we have to fill the proper spaces the better. Right. Absolutely. And so at the December Selectman's newsletter will be posted. It has been posted on social media. And please, please talk to people because we need to add more to the deck. deck. <laughs> mm -hmm. All righty. Um, did we have any correspondence in our overstuffed? Not, I did not check the mailbox and not addition, not any correspondence to me besides what I just read. And nothing that you have gotten, Connie? No, but I don't check the box anymore. Okay. And I nothing ever came to me. It, well. Right. I think, didn't you usually call me and you'd say, hey, can you look in the box? <laughs> no, what I'm it. thinking of is okay. whether or not I ever received any email directly to my email address, but I think all of the official email was forwarded to me by Joyce. So I believe that you and Melissa would have it if there was email correspondence. 
There was okay. no personal email correspondence. There was Rivers Alliance back to the beginning of time in the email box that I have um, not 94 emails in the box unread of the Rivers Alliance. So there's some email in there, but I have not gone through it yet. I guess it's probably updated. I didn't even look to see, tell you the truth. <laughs> All but right. you have access to it also. So barring that, um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Probably we don't need one, but I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Thanks, Melissa. I'll second that motion. Thanks everybody for coming out virtually. And we'll see you all next month. And we need to pass that motion. All those in favor of adjourning the meeting? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We'll adjourn.